Today, pimp my Wi-Fi. Hopefully, I'm going to be turning this into something a little more like this. Zing! <laughs> So today my friend Ty is going to be my guinea pig for the first episode. He has a few issues he's facing in his house. The main one being poor Wi-Fi signal in certain rooms of the house. And the second being he has a huge cable 24 seven that literally wraps around his staircase to feed internet to his computers. I wanna get rid of that cable altogether and make sure that the Wi-Fi is really strong and fast in all of the rooms. Now there's going to be a few sections to this episode of Pimp My Wi-Fi. The first section is something that you can do at home for free to improve your broadband. The second few steps are going to require a few tools and a little bit of basic DIY knowledge. But I don't want that to put anybody off because I'm going to show you step by step today what you're going to need, it's all in the description, and how to do it. So with the intro out the way, I need to load up the car and let's go to Ties and see what we're working with. So when I arrived at Ty's, he showed me where the original router was located, which is in his front room in the lounge. I whipped out my phone, did a quick speed test, and was I surprised? No, not really. We were pulling around 20 megabits per second. Absolutely disgraceful when Ty has pretty much about 600, 700 coming in on the bottom floor of his house. My mission today is to get that all over the house. This is the current setup. So this is the Virgin modem coming in. This is where the internet comes into the property. Now, basically to make things easier, the companies that provide us with our internet modems, so our ISPs, make the router in most cases only give off one wireless network, when in actual fact, most routers are capable of giving off two networks. And those networks are the 2.4 gigahertz network and the five gigahertz network. Now, all you really need to know is that the five gigahertz network is far superior to the 2.4 gigahertz network. However, However, it doesn't travel anywhere near as far. Now the way the ISPs make this easier for the end user, people like you and me, is they combine both of these networks, the 2.4 and the 5, into one network. Which basically means when you scan for Wi-Fi on your phone, you find your router as one network and that is it. That is the combined 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. What we want to do is be able to separate these two bands so we as the end user have the option to connect to the 5 gigahertz directly or the 2.4. 2.4. What you're going to want to go ahead and do is locate the sticker on the bottom of the router. That should have some information about how to log on to your specific router. Connect to your router with an Ethernet cable and then navigate over to the wireless settings and then these are the settings that we're going to want to change. Now obviously this is going to be different per router but what we need to do is be able to change the names of these networks. So as you can see on screen now we've got the 2.4 and the 5 and they both have the exact same name and password. We're going to change that so they're separate names altogether. What I like to do is add a hyphen IOT, which stands for Internet of Things. Now, like I said, the 2.4 gigahertz network isn't completely forgotten because Ty has things in this house, for example, like ring doorbells, and you'll need the 2.4 gigahertz still available for those things. Now, you can call your networks whatever you want to call them. You could literally call them 2.4 or 5, or you could have them like I have, the exact same name for both, but the 2.4 has the little IOT on the end. They just need to be separate, so when you're scanning for Wi-Fi, they will show up as separate names. They can have the same password, that's absolutely fine. Now the next thing we're going to want to do once we've changed the names of the networks is change the wireless channels that the network is running on. We've got two channels to change. We need to change the 2.4 channel and the 5 gigahertz channel respectively. Now this may take some trial and error for you if you live in a congested area. You're just going to have to choose a new channel, click save, do a speed test and see if your speeds have increased or not and then obviously land on the channel that gives you the fastest speeds. Ty lives in the middle of nowhere so it doesn't really matter what channel we put them on, however we're going to be adding a second access point later on in this video and to do that we need to know the channel of our main router. 
Nine times out of ten, it's the factor that makes people most upset with their broadband. It's the fact that they are connected to the 2.4 gigahertz radio and they have no idea that they are. With them separate, you can choose as the end user which radio you're connecting to. The 5 gigahertz is so much faster. So now, if all has worked, as I have said, we should be able to do a speed test on this phone right here, connected to our 5 gigahertz network, and it should be absolutely rapid. Bear in mind, this is over Wi-Fi, not connected by a cable. Pretty good, right? It's time for a word from our sponsor, Hot UK Deals. Now, I don't know about you, but I always feel really, really great when I snatch a deal on an item, especially if it's something that I've always wanted and I've managed to get it for a reduced price. I recently copped a deal on Hot UK Deals for an unlimited 5G data sim. After cashback, I think it's only costing me eight pounds a month. Yes. Eight pounds for unlimited 5G. Now, obviously you can use Hot UK Deals to get deals year round, but obviously they're on fire right now, no pun intended, this Black Friday with some absolutely mega deals ready for you guys to cop. The thing I like about the platform is that it's completely community driven. So you can speak and see what others have to say about the certain deals on there. So whether you're looking for a gift for somebody, whether it's a new iPhone or you just want to get some voucher codes for your favorite website, click the link in the top line of the description. It will take you to Hot UK Deals website. You can also download the app. I want to say a huge thank you to Hot UK Deals for sponsoring this video. Now on with my free networking tips. So now comes the DIY portion of the video. This is the bit that I'm most excited for because this is gonna make the biggest difference for Ty. What I'm gonna do is add a hardwired point all the way up in Ty's office so he can connect his computers to the router via a hardwired cable without having that absolute trip hazard running up and down the stairs 24 seven. Okay, so the cable comes down here. I've tacked it up here. And what I'm about to do is step foot on here and hide the cable underneath this lead. There's Ty, look, Hi. because Ty said he doesn't want it on show. Right, what next? We need to drill the hole, I think. Yep, right yep. about. There she is. First try to. <laughs> to do this next bit, we're gonna need to pick up a few things. First, some outdoor rated ethernet cable. I've got 305 meters here for about 60 pounds off Amazon. Really, really doesn't break the bank. We're also gonna need two Cat5e faceplates and two 25 millimeter back boxes to mount those faceplates on the wall so the job looks neat. Okay, so our 25 mil back box is on the wall and we've got our Cat5e cable coming through. Now poses the question, how do we get this connected into this. Now there's a series of wires inside of here and on the back of this there's actually a little diagram. The camera can't pick it up but it's in there and it's the wiring schematic that I'm going to be using. There's A and B and my favourite and the most common favourite is actually B. And I'm going to remove the sheath off this cable. Now this is a crimp tool. They're about a fiver again on Amazon. Really really cheap. And it's as simple as laying the right cable in the right slot, taking our punch tool and... And just like that, all of the cables are crimped onto the back of this connector. Now we basically have to go and do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, and there we go. Just like that, I've repeated the exact same process I've done downstairs. We now have our faceplate with the Ethernet cable plugged in. Ty! Hi! Are you ready? I'm ready. Can I unplug the cable and plug in the new cable? You can. Bye bye old cable. And now, this new one. It works! My cable works! Do a speed test. Do a speed test. <laughs> I know what I'm doing bro. A bit better than 200. A bit better than 200 bit eh? Better. And it's going through the cable which is going on the outside of the house. So we can literally get rid of this thing down the hallway. Okay, so we've gone ahead and ran our exterior network cable from Ty's lounge up to his office. It works absolutely fine with his computer, but what we don't want to do is stop there. We need to add some Wi-Fi coverage up there in the office and also give Ty some more ports 
because he has two computers up there, not just one. And that's where this device comes in. This isn't sponsored, this is literally the cheapest Wi-Fi 6 access point I could find on Amazon. So I've plugged into it with this cable and as you can see I've picked up an IP address here of 192.168.1.1 so I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the web browser. I'm going to disable network isolation and we're going to choose wireless one. We're going to enable this wireless network and this is going to be our Widius network. We're going to choose WPA2 for our security. We've got our network key in there and this network is going to be our 5 gigahertz network only. Okay, once the first one's configured, we're going to go over to Wireless 2 and this is going to be our 2.4 GHz IoT network. So again, the same as our Virgin router, we're going to go hyphen IoT. This needs to be identical to the Virgin router. This is going to be our 2.4 GHz only network. Click Apply. Okay, so now the wireless networks are configured on our new access point. They're literally mirroring what's on our Virgin Hub. We just need to make sure that they're not running on the same channel. Now to do that, in this router, you go to the advanced settings, all the way down to wireless, and as you can see, for the 2.4 GHz channel, I've stuck it on 11, because it's far enough away from channel 1, which our Virgin Hub is using, and on our 5 GHz channel, our Virgin Hub is using 36, so I'm sticking this all the way up here on 116. Go ahead and hit apply. And now the last and final thing we need to do to this little router is to turn it from a router into an access point. So for here we go to advanced setup, router AP mode, and we're going to change it from router mode into AP mode. Once we've got that, we can click apply and OK. Now we're good to go. This can go and be plugged in upstairs. Okay, so with our access point configured, this is where it's going to live. Up here in the office, right next to a brand spanking new port on the wall. So this is the cable that's bringing the internet into our new Netgear access point. So this can plug directly into here, so it's linking to our Virgin Hub downstairs. And then we've got our second cable here, which can go down here, plug into PC number two. And we've got Wi-Fi up here, all coming through our cable that we ran earlier. I really hope all of this makes sense and gives you maybe a little bit of inspiration to try and do this at home yourself. Okay, let's see if this works. There it is. Sound! It works! That used to be 200. That you, what, you used to get 200 up here? Yeah. Even through that cable? Yeah. And now you're getting close to set 600. Leads me on to that test I did at the start of the video up in Ty's bedroom. It was about 20 meg or something over the Wi-Fi. Okay, so here we are, going up into Ty's bedroom. Zing! <laughs> Top floor Wi-Fi, baby. I think that'll do. So, ladies and gents, there you have it. That is the basics of network expansion using Ty as a guinea pig. We've got rid of that absolute trip hazard running up Ty's stairs, which he has there 24 seven for his computers. We have changed our wireless channels. We've separated our 2.4 and five gigahertz, and we've added an extra Wi-Fi point all the way in Ty's office to give coverage in the office and to his bedroom, which lives right above. And the speeds, well, as you saw, are absolutely fine. It's a few days since I've done the install and Ty is still absolutely over the moon with what I've managed to do in literally two hours one afternoon at his house. So guys there you have it. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, if this video helped a like would be awesome and yeah I'll see you in the next one. Peace! <laughs>